Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at chlorine and its compounds and the subtopic for today is now the large scale manufacture of hydrochloric acid or gas. So it's gas and it can be dissolved in water to form the acid. So we look at the steps of forming and then we look at some of the pollution effects of chlorine and just bring come to an end of the session. So some of the raw materials for this reaction is hydrogen. So hydrogen can be obtained um, by other products of, of petroleum industry. It can also be uh, gotten as electrolysis of brine or from electrolysis of water. So you see there are different ways you can, you can get hydrogen. And we have mentioned these ways. In the byproduct of petroleum industries, remember we talked about cracking where we said hydrogen is one of the products that is formed. Electrolysis of brine, we are going to do the electrolysis bit in electrochemistry in form 4. And that is also the electrolysis of brine and also electrolysis of water. So the next uh, raw material is chlorine. So chlorine is usually obtained from electrolysis of brine. So you can see brine, how it's producing. So an industry that does the electrolysis of brine can uh, set up also a section where they're producing the hydrochloric acid. So uh, also it can be gotten from the electrolysis of fused uh, calcium chloride. <clears throat> So a small sample of hydrogen is allowed through a jet and is burnt in excess chlorine gas. So you can see from the setup, we have chlorine and we have hydrogen that are allowed and they are burnt uh, in excess chlorine. So it is hydrogen burnt in excess chlorine, hydrogen burnt in excess chlorine. So hydrogen reacts with chlorine to form hydrogen chloride gas. And then the mixture is usually very explosive uh, on the presence of salt. So it's very important to ensure that that reaction is done under the right conditions. So the hydrogen chloride that is formed is then dissolved in water. You can see a stream of water and in presence of glass beads. <clears throat> when you look at this setup, uh, there are glass beads in, uh, in presence of those glass beads. This is to increase surface for absorption. So that's why we have the glass beads. You notice some assessment questions have those glass beads should, others don't. But remember, there are some glass beads where the uh, hydrogen chloride gas is being dissolved in the water. So the hydrochloric acid is usually around 35% pure. And it's transported in steel tanks lined with rubber. This is because the chloric acid reacts a lot with metals. So if you if there is an exposed part of metal, it's going to react with it to form iodine chloride, uh, which makes the acid appear yellow. So there are some pollution uh, in, in this industry because remember we are reacting chlorine. We said chlorine is very poisonous. So we know that chlorine can be one of the pollutants in this reaction. And then the explosivity of the reaction between oxygen and hydrogen was also very pollutant in nature. So what are some of the things we consider when we are setting up an hydrochloric acid manufacturing plant? The, because uh, it needs to be closed, just like we were discussing, because of where the most of the products are coming from, it comes from the electrolysis of brine, which is uh, sodium chloride. So it needs to be closer to that kind of a plant. And then there needs to be availability of natural gas, because we need to get hydrogen from that. And then also availability of water, because the water is used to dissolve the hydrogen chloride gas. And then, of course, labor, labor, we need the people like to work in the industry, market like to sell the, the final product that is being produced. There's also capital and uh, like to start off and to buy products and then also means of transport. And remember, like the means of transport, we said that the hydrochloric acid needs to be carried in steel tanks lined with rub. If you use like normal iron tanks, it's going to take part in the reaction. That's why the, the acid that is gotten at the end of the day is yellow in color because it has reacted with the iron or the metal to form iron 3 chloride, which is 
uh, brown or yellow in, in color. That is the reason why we need to have like good means of transportation. So what are some of the uses of hydrochloric acid? Uh, it is used in sewage treatment, as you can see above. So this is a sewage treatment uh, plant. And then it's also used in the treatment of water. Uh, that is the chlorination at water works. So many waters that have been set up also in the homestead are usually uh, treated first because before they are used for different uh, functions at home. So this is done through reactions of hydrochloric. So hydrochloric acid is used now to form the substances that are added in those treatments. So it helps also to remove rust from metals uh, before they are being galvanized. So you have seen cases where some metal that have rusted up are placed in a certain solution and then the rust comes off. So that is usually hydrochloric acid that is used. It helps to remove that ox the oxide layer that has already formed. And then after that, the metal now is coated with zinc or galvanized. Or it can be electroplated, so it, can be, it cannot rust in the future. It is also used to make dyes uh, and drugs and it is also used to make uh, photographic materials like silver chloride on photographic uh, films. Next we will look at the environmental effect of chlorine and its compounds. This, this sums up what we have been learning on chlorine and its compounds. So chlorine may dissolve in rich water and fall as acid rain which has adverse effects on plants and animals. Uh, buildings and soil nutrients. We also talked about the CFCs, the chlorofluorocarbons, actually they are biodegradable. Uh, so they, when they diffuse into the atmosphere and they break down to chloride and fluoride atoms, this usually deplete the ozone layer. So it's it's one of the greenhouses, uh, greenhouse gases. So the PVCs, also the plastics, the pro, uh, poly, uh, vinyl chlorides are actually also non-biodegradable. We also talk about this uh, when we discuss uh, plastics later and polymers in organic tree. So if you throw them into the environment, they do not degrade, so they, they cause um, the, the environmental effect. And then DDT, uh, which is a pesticide, has a very long lifespan. So when it's washed off and goes to the plants and also to the aquatic life, it causes adverse effects on these plants and animals. So like DDT in Kenya is, is banned completely because uh, it's, it was used to increase uh, pyrethroids in mosquito control. So let's look at this question and come, come to the end of chlorine and its compounds. So the diagram below is a setup of a large scale manufacture of hydrochloric acid. Study it and ask the questions that follow. So we know there is chlorine gas. So we know the other gas that is going to be mixed automatically is hydrogen. So they are burnt in air to form hydrochloric Fumes. These hydrochloric fumes are reacted with a stream of water in presence of glass beads and the acid is produced. So what's the glass, purpose of the glass beads is to increase surface area for absorption. And then uses of hydrochloric acid, we said it is used in water treatment. You also you said it is used to make dyes, uh, it is used to make uh, drugs. There are so many uses that we mentioned in the previous, uh, uh, previously as we were going through the session. So that's it. Uh, you can get more questions uh, on the website. Mm -hmm. Uh, on this topic and practice on it. Uh, it's a tested topic, especially when it comes to properties of chlorine. So that's it for today. So this concludes for us the chlorine and its compounds. In the next topic, we are going to be looking at a form four topic. So we are shifting to form four. So see you in the next lesson.